And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this evening. We have a magnificent guest with us tonight, one who is going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration. And that is none other than our sister, Shalawita Muhammad Jr. Assalamu alaikum, ma'am. Wa alaikum salam, sir. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come on the People's Podcast. On behalf of myself, my family, and the viewing audience, we are grateful for your time. And everyone, please go back and watch part one of Sister Lawita. She did such a phenomenal job. Thanks. It's, it's, yes, ma'am. People have been texting and calling and on YouTube putting comments for, you know, sending positive energy your way from the first <laughs> interview. But we had to, it's only right that we came back for a part two. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. Yes, ma'am. Now, I wanted to ask you about your personal, let's come out the gate swinging, your personal connection with Master Far Muhammad. My personal connection, it's interesting that you asked that question, Brother Joshua. Um, I had uh, a really tough month, maybe about a few weeks ago, within the month of um, June. And I was sitting on the side of the bed and I was really weeping. And I just really had to dig deep within to strengthen my connection with the God. Mm -hmm. With the trials and the tribulations and being a single woman, I was listening to the Final Call Radio and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan talked about how Allah set it up like this for the woman to have to depend solely on the Savior. I bear witness to that. And I am striving to strengthen my connection every single day. And a prayer that I just prayed today was the first time that I said to the Savior, I said, I love you and gave him the greetings. It just, it just brought tears to my eyes. Other people may have done it. I don't know, but me, it was the first time for me. And I mm -hmm. said, I'm striving to love you as I'm striving to love myself. So I'm really, really desirous of being strongly connected to the Savior. Yes, sir. Praise to uh, yes, ma'am. And people are showing you love all around the world. Thank you, Wedding Salam family. Thank you to Jocelyn J.B. Bailey. And thank you to our YouTube family as well. My next question that we have for you, ma'am, is... I wanted to ask you about um, your walking out on a job recently. <laughs> Y'all walked out on that job. You know, what's interesting is, Brother Joshua, I worked for myself my entire life, right, as a hairstylist. Then after that, I got into trucking. So with some of the trials and tribulations and experiencing so much loss, I got a job. I can't last long on a job. It's real difficult. So I was at Publix and what I did was I really went there to learn how to bake on a larger scale regarding my cheesecakes, right? But I just couldn't take it anymore. I was in the, I was not happy. Um, the envy, the jealousy, the white people, I mean, it was just, it was too much to deal with every single day. Because if you're a true Muslim, you're going to stand out. You know, people are going to know that there's something different. Isn't that one of our cadences? Everywhere you go, people want to know who you are, where you come from. That's true all around the world. So I was ready to go. So I remember I was just kind of stressed a little bit and I was in the receiving area. And I said, Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. Today is the day that I make you my everything. Mm. When I left getting off work, it might have been about a week later. And I said, I'm going in there to quit. I'm done. And uh, if I could share this with you briefly, I shared it at, uh, at the study group in Cobb County recently. I was driving. And the minister said, in fear, faith, and truth, it's not that you won't be made afraid, but you have to challenge that fear. So we can start depending on these little checks and all of that, but it really takes some courage to just leave it. 
not knowing what you're going to do and give Allah a chance to show up for you. Because the minister said, give Allah a chance, right? He also said that we offend Allah daily when we don't make better use of him. So I'm driving and drew a blank. Word is bond to Allah. When I looked up, the light was red. I was going through and cars are coming. So I almost just got squeezed in, but it was by Allah's grace that I didn't. My point is saying that it was Allah's way of showing me I saved your life. Mm -hmm. I have the power, not of some things over some things, but over all things. I yes, you. Okay. So I went in, I said, where's the paper to resign? He said, are you working today? No, I'm not. What's your shift? I'm off. I'm off permanently. And I left. And, um, it's been a blessing ever since. Not easy, but a blessing. Hmm. Thank you, Allah. Yes, ma'am. Now I'm gonna go back to the car situation. Once mm -hmm. you were, once you became aware of the reality of what took place, what what was your thought process? I was shook because mm -hmm. I was when I looked up. This is the light, and it's red. I had no sense of anything it was as though i drew a blank i wasn't even pregnant and the cars were so close it was only by allah's grace and he had to show me just in case you know sister lawita you forgot i am master farad muhammad the true and living god all powerful so it was me that kept those cars from hitting you not the brakes not your brakes. And I said, Allah walked by so many times. I had to pull over to the side. I was still shaking. So just in case there was any fear of trepidation and I wanted to punk out, he had to let me know. And I went straight on in the publics and signed those papers and yes. stepped out of faith. Yes, sir. Now, that phenomenal testimony and story, and thank you for your honesty and transparency, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, a lot of us have been in that situation before where we are in between jobs immediately and you sweat and pressure and, and you know, all doubt, anxiety. What, yes. What were your steps moving forward to, you know, overcome those type of thoughts? Well, considering that I worked for myself for a very long time, I think that getting a job allowed me to be comfortable somewhat in terms of depending on a paycheck, right? But being comfortable is a dangerous space to be in. You don't get a chance to see the value of the hard trials until you sit in somewhere comfortable, not growing, not developing, and not getting a chance to see the power of the God, right? Mm -hmm. So my step was to continue to strive to do something for myself, but I wanna say something if it's okay. In study group, there's a young man, his name is Brother Joseph. Because I can't take credit for anything that he said. But he said this. He said, when we work and we get a paycheck, we're never nervous or doubting that the master going to pay us. We work mm -hmm. all week, two weeks, and we trust that he's going to pay us. But when it's time to trust the God, okay, we have intrepidation. But you're working for an enemy, and he can, at a moment's notice, you know, make it to fit his narrative. They do it all the time. Work you real good. You go to work, there's a sign on the door. You can't contact nobody. You get the news. You think they're on your side to try to help you. But at the end of the day, you're working with no doubt that he's going to pay you. But when it's time to depend on the God, you're nervous. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget that when he said that. I said, man, that's powerful. When we're doing our, when we're in study group and we're doing the study guides and we're going over what the minister has assigned to us, we started off with this book. There is no doubt in it, and if it's no doubt, it's just not the book. It's the words. It's Allah's revelation. It's him. There's no doubt in Him, but we don't doubt that paycheck is gonna come through. We trust Him. Lord have mercy. Thanks, man. You teach and you teach us, Lord. Either. Praise be to Allah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And people are bearing witness all around the world saying, wow, teach, preaching, you know, fire emojis, all that good stuff. Oh, <laughs> yes, ma'am. Now, speaking of people and sending positive energy and love towards you, 
ever since I've known you, which has been my whole life, especially, you know, being a child, watching, you know, you drill and your sisters and your family and all of that good stuff in Chicago, you've always had this presence about yourself that's very free. And you still have that amazing presence where you don't care. You come off like you don't care what people think. You're just unique. You're you are confident in your own self. What is it about you that doesn't care about what other people think about you, especially in religion, when everything is uniformity, you know, eat like this, dress like this, wear like this, boom, boom, and everybody has the same kind of demeanor. You always you always have color and flavor, if you will, to your right. style. What what is it about you that makes you be like that? It's very interesting that you asked that question. I was at that time not showing up as the real me. Mm. So I was hiding the insecurity. Mm. The minister talks about how we mask that uh, maybe by trying to overcompensate because really I was truly, truly broken. And I wanna prove this point because uh, speaking weekly and opening up weekly, I made a, a commitment to be very honest, open and authentic, very transparent because the enemy can't come against you. He's powerless when you just, oh, you can't use anything against me. You know, so the minister said that Allah doesn't try you what you hate. He tries you what you love. He knew that I love to be private. Mm. So I showed up masking my insecurity and my pain. And I want to prove something to you, uh, Brother Joshua. When my mother was pregnant with me, she wanted a boy. Okay, she didn't want a girl. And when it was time to abort me, it was too late. This is not a dig. These are just the facts, right? The point that I'm making is everything surrounding my birth was for me to be a boy. So I used to want to be, I used to want to be feminine like other young ladies and dainty and based on what the world said you should be like, right? That's how I was showing up. Showing up with those male characteristics, you know, strength not knowing that later on Allah would use that for his own purpose because what you think is not good for you, Allah can take it and uh, use you in a mighty powerful way. So throughout my life, people call me junior. You know that. Junior's on my birth certificate. Mm. The revelation came two years ago well, 2020, yeah, 2022 or 20, maybe 23. When I went to Savior's Day, the a sister called me before then and said, I salam alaikum, Junior, and I lost my cool. I said, mm. I am not a damn boy. I'm not an FOI. I'm not a man. I'm an MGT. Mm. So think about what I'm saying. Junior, FOI, I don't go to FOI class. Mm, mm, mm. I don't have any personal pronouns that I identify other than the MGT. Yes, ma'am. So yes, ma it wasn't what I said. It was how I said it that I had to look for her and apologize because it was rough. And I said to her, I asked Allah, I said, bless me to find her when I see her at Savior's Day, inshallah. <laughs> and he did. And I apologized to her for how I said it but not for what I said. Because mm. you have any straight man in the Nation of Islam that's straight for real and not for play, talking about um, Brother uh, Ronald MGT, <laughs> like, huh, come again? I'm a FOI, speaking in third person, but I am an MGT. Yes, ma'am. So I was masking how I really felt about myself. And to be very honest and transparent, I used to tell a lot, I hate the way you made me. Mm -hmm. But then the minister said, how can you love the God that created you? So how I felt about me was obviously how I felt about him because I had yet to rise above emotion into the thinking of God. All things work for good for those who love the Lord. And when Sister Mary Alice told me, she said, Sister Lawita, these things didn't happen to you. 
they happen through you for someone else, you hmm. know? So that's why when we had the interview the last time, Brother Joshua, I said, I'm no longer a victim. I had been a victim all my life. In my mind, I didn't have the right mindset, you know? I was mad or disappointed that Allah made me like that. I wanted to be like everybody else. So I was masking, but in that there was still some strength, but it had to be cultivated. It had to be developed, but I was very insecure. So when I went through what I went through in Arizona with the 10 year trial, a, a decade of loss and my business spread all over Arizona and over here and the gossip and the slander, it was like nasty medicine. It didn't taste good to me, but it was get good for me because it freed me worried about what everybody thought. I don't give a damn about what people think if you want me to be honest with you. Now, it doesn't bother me at all, but it mm. took that for me to get there because we say that Allah, when we're under trial, Allah is uh, my patron. And to him is my eventual return. My patron is my friend. He's my friend. He wasn't trying to punish me for those 10 years, but he was going to make sure that I knew that it was me and me alone that got you to the other side of this. That's number one. And number two, you can't worry about what people think because we want to be like the minister. We want to be like Farrakhan because the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, my minister is one that the world cannot bother. We want to be like that. Not mm. stress out because of what somebody thinks. They lying on you. They don't like you. You know, being lied on is a trigger. But you in good company because he also said, the minister said, if everybody likes you, you need to check your character because everybody shouldn't like you in a world ruled by Satan when you're trying to do right. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. No, oh, sister, let me go up. Okay, so, and thank you. Some people are bear witness saying that's right. Praise be to Allah. I'm coming to all the comments. I want to be yeah. clear. So you don't want to be called junior? No. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You got to ask it. Okay, yes, ma'am. Like, yeah, you can ask some of them folks that, you know, how they identify. <laughs> yes, ma'am. But I ain't confused. Now, I might have been confused. It was revelatory, Brother Joshua. I didn't know. You know, faith comes before understanding. I didn't have any understanding. I didn't know. I didn't even know to be offended. The minister said this one time. He said, you know, we as women, we don't know the difference between an insult or a compliment. Mm. So it goes right into our lesson. Can the devil fool the Muslim? I mean, not nowadays, but uh, I can't tell. He said, go look in the mirror. There's one, <laughs> you know? So here I am, confused, and I lost out the author of confusion. But man, when I began to see, I said, oh, no. I didn't even know to be upset. I answered to that. But I'm an MGT. I'm not an FOI. Right? Praise God. <laughs> Beautiful. Yes, ma'am. Sister Naima says, I'm like them, brother Nadio Adio Nasur. I'm like them. Shout out from Baltimore. Sister Jasmine <laughs> says, All praise be to Allah. Sister April Songbird, praise be to Allah. Sister Miriam, Walaikum Salam family. Sister Latifa, Walaikum Salam. Uh, she said, Queen Lawida, thank you for inviting us to witness the truth. Everybody's bear witness. Yes, Deshaun from Chicago says, ASA Sister Lawida, I got a new look, a new outlook on you now that I hear your story. Great point, sister. For the audio and the source is interesting, inspirational testimony. People are just bearing witness and showing love. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. And yes, can I say real quick, you know, sometimes, you know, when the minister shares his story of what his experience was when his mother was pregnant with him, these things are not said to disrespect our parents or to disrespect it's our journey, you know, and it can help someone and give them strength. And if we stand before people as though we have it all together, you know, we looking good, but we messed up on the inside, you know? So it's so important to teach what we need to learn. You know, you say something, you look back at it like, man, that was good. That's, that's for me too, because we haven't mastered anything. So I'm sharing this testimony openly, honestly, and very transparent with no judgment to my mother or my father. You understand what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, we have to have the courage to take it to the God. He allowed it. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Beautiful. Okay. And people are literally blowing, blowing up the chat. Thank you all for watching. Um, I have a question. I want to stay right there. Yes, the, that's the conversation I had with my mother because of my sisters. Everybody, you know, we all went and asked, Mom, you know, what would you think about, you know, you got these children with each of our personalities? How much, you know, 
Right. How are you drilling with me? You know, I'm an actor. So when you big into acting and when you watching on TV and movie, you drilling it serious. It was in wartime. You know, right. what was going on in minutes, you know? Right. Let's, right. right. So that's very important. So now that you understand that for your mother, it, was it the same as you look at your children, what you were going through and to see their personalities is the same with you as a mother? Absolutely. Because hmm. I would have, if I knew better, I would have, I had the intentions on doing it differently. Hmm. But you ever hear people say that I'm not going to be anything like my mother. I'm not going to be anything like my father. But you're going to be exactly like them. You don't have a different example. That's exactly what you're going to do. <laughs> okay. So I did the same thing in a sense, not in terms of praying for a particular sexual orientation when my children were in the womb. You know, I wanted to be a girl. I wanted to be a boy. I didn't do that. But I made some of the same mistakes, you know, in uh, my parenting. And my roughness, you know, because my children, my daughter told me, she said, we never saw you smile. I, I was serious. <laughs> I wasn't smiling. I meant what I said and I said what I meant. OK, so, you know, sometimes you can miss you cannot have that balance, especially as a single mother. You know, the, uh, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan talked about walking around with one shoe on. If you don't have a mate, I mean, the, the walk is, is not balanced. The foot that that's, doesn't have a shoe on is unprotected. You can get germs, you know. So it, I was, I, I didn't have balance. I was, I told you I was messed up. Hello, somebody, <laughs> you know. But yeah, I, I, I've done the, some of the same things and um, I did my best. And now I can see why we're not to judge our parents, you know. That's not my place to do. You know, Allah's not unaware. We often think if we could get them on the on the cell phone, woo, you ain't gonna believe this. <laughs> I got some new, I'm gonna spill the tea. It's not getting ready to take what? So slow. I'm so glad because I've been busy taking care of four billion, four hundred million. Woo, I forgot. It don't work like that. So he is very well aware, but it really takes the courage to go to the God to be all right with what he allows. So the answer to that question, yes. <laughs> I did it and I messed up too. <laughs> mm, yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, I want to stay right there. You said you asked right. God that you didn't, um, that you wanted something different. What did you want? Like you said, you, you, when you asked God when you were younger, like you didn't want to be a certain kind of way. What type of way you wanted to be more, which way did you want to be? Well, you know, I would see young, I would see young ladies. They were so dainty, mm. you know, but I would fight. You get to talking crazy. I would do that too. I mean, I did all kinds of stuff. I mean, this is a true story. This is, I'm going to share this with you. This is what I mean when I say I want to be different. There was a lady that said something out of her house, out of her window. Uh, I think she called me out of my name or said something crazy, but she's in her house out of her window. I was 14. Uh, mowing the lawn. I unplugged the lawnmower. Back then, you had to plug it up. And I went, knocked on her door, and the door was open. She didn't come fast enough. I went in her house. I said, What did you say? I said, come downstairs and say it in my face. What kind of foolishness is that? Husband is a police officer, but I'm in her house. So when I say rough around the edges, I didn't have, I was so rough. I didn't have the 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 daintiness, the what I consider to be soft. I, I had to learn that, you know, through these teachings, because I thought that Allah messed up. I thought he had a bad day when he created me. I thought he made a mistake. I'm like, man, did you close your eyes and take a nod? I mean, mm. because I didn't feel good about me. You know, I didn't I didn't have any issues with my dark skin. I didn't have that hang up. But what I had was, how come you made me so different? Why did you make me so strong? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't understand that. And it was my daughter, and I never shared this publicly, but I'm going to share it today. We were in Arizona, and I said, I said, Rekha, I said, I'm just, I said, I'm just tired of being single. Been a single mom, doing it by myself, really, for two decades. Oh, 22 years of doing it as a single mom, by myself, and out of those 22 years, I may have had enough vacations on one hand and all that time. And I was hurting. And my daughter said, she said, Ma, I don't know if or when Allah will bless you with a husband anytime soon. She mm -hmm. said, because you're the strength that some of the weak women need. Mm -hmm. So because women, 
are laying on their back to get their rent paid. They want to do this to get their hair done. And when I spent time homeless for four years, I was solicited by men with money in the ranks and in the street. Hmm. And I had to sell my soul to Satan to say that God is not able. I'm not able to do that. Hmm. So it wasn't a matter of if Allah was going to show up. It was just a matter of when. So I had to spend time homeless for four years to maintain my dignity. It ain't enough money for me to do all of that. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So that strength is something that I thought it was something wrong. But what did Satan say he would do? He would make evil fair seem. He had a right thing looking wrong, the wrong look thing looking right. If you ain't run a revolving door and being some type of hoish woman, then something got to be wrong with you. When they didn't see me with a man, they labeled me the mystery woman and said she must be gay. Mm -hmm. She she's Gay, it ain't never no man around. So something has to be wrong with me because I don't want to be what they feel like I should be, mm. you know? Now, I'm not saying I was, uh, 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 hey, that would be lying, okay? Oh, I was reckless. So, but when I started to clean my life up and really desire to live better, even as I was falling down and getting up and falling down and getting up, I was so mentally messed up because I couldn't, I didn't feel good about me, mm. you know? but I'm relatable. And then he allowed me to have that balance where I can be objective, you know, because when I would be in the salon, the women like you always taking the man's side, you know, but 75% of the work is with the woman. And when you define the word with, somebody's accompanying you. Who's accompanying you when it's 75% of the work with the woman? It's you and God, you know, so... Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like it, you know, but I had to learn how to fall in love with me. I really mm. did, you know, I really, I really, really did. And um, I love it now. I love the strength. I love the uniqueness because sometimes we are afraid to talk about the beautiful things about ourselves. When people will compliment me, I would change the subject. Mm. I was more comfortable hearing what I heard him throughout my life than I was a compliment. I didn't know anything different, but I am learning how to fall in love with me. And I'm by Allah's grace, I must be doing pretty good because I told the Savior, I love you. What? Oh, that just, the tears, this was a few hours ago, the tears just ran down my face. And I was just like, man, I just want to be, I just want to be the best Muslim that I can be, you know? I, I don't want to quit on myself. I don't want to give up. And I want to continue to strive. Because if I can fall in love with the God and fall in love with me, then we can fall in love with our people. Because that's why we don't, we're don't we not getting them. Because we're not in love with them. We're not in love with ourselves. And we're not in love with our love. Who came in the person of a man? You okay. know? Yes, sir. All oh, praises to like teaching. And people bear witnesses like we there everywhere saying, uh, Sister Minister Aisha said she went in her house. People bear witness like, yes, that's right, Sister Queens, and you know, snap fingers and all that good stuff. I want to stay right there. Yes, sir. A lot, of, a lot of us, not just women, but the men as well, are in the process and have been in the process of falling in love with ourselves. What advice would you give to us in humanity, society, religion, not religious? People about falling in love with yourself. So the men don't allow a woman to demasculate. Uh, how do you say it? Demasculate. Demasculate. Do mm -hmm. not allow a woman to demasculate you. Mm -hmm. That is how you can begin the process of falling in love because that's a major problem. In and out. Women want to be men. They don't want to respect the authority of a man. They want Minister Farrakhan, but you don't want to be a mother Khadija. So the first thing that a brother, a black man, especially in the nation can do is do not allow a woman to take away your manhood. Mm. Now, I mean that from the depth of my being because the Willie Lynch letter has a hold on me like never before. Okay. Brother Sultan said, you know, when you read something that you already read and it affects you differently, the word hasn't changed, but you changed, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So when I read it, I'm seeing Satan and all his minions at work. The minister said, 
that the only way that Satan can't get you is to know that he came. But once a woman turns you into something else and she wants to be the man and make you the woman, we got a whole mess here. That is the number one start, in my humble opinion, you know, because you got to be a man, period. That's not for sale because we teach these things on the woman's side, right? You know, love yourself or let nobody treat you like a piece of meat and this and that. But what about the man? Mm, Even if 25% mm. of the work is with the man, it's still some work, you know? So you you have a man in your midst, the Honorable Minister Louis Farcom. And the way some of us are to the brothers, you think you would try that with the minister? Mm, mm. Obviously, we ain't listening because the minister said the black man today will break your damn neck. That them is exact words, okay? You know, we can have named that lecture, okay? <laughs> I'll be the champ. The champ is here. Probably. The champ is here. Okay, but I want to. I want to say right there. So like we there. Yes, yes sir, I want because that's something I I battle with. You know, I don't want to just be a piece of meat to people. I just I want to be a good brother. I'm tired. I'm tired of people objectifying me and all that kind of stuff. So I want to love myself. So I'm, stop making me a piece of meat to the sisters out there, women out there. I'm more than I have a brain. So I want the brothers to love yourself. So you won't be objectified as well. Now for the sisters. What what advice would you say about loving themselves? I find this interesting too because if you ask a woman, a black woman or any woman, who are you? They would give you their name. Mm. But that's not who you are. So you mm. have to know who you are and your prayer, in my humble opinion, I always ask God, bless me to see myself through your eyes. Because if we see it through the eyes of society or see it through the eyes of, you know, their criteria, then you're going to miss the mark. You know, you're not, I mean, being out here in Georgia and the way the women are dressed, or I should say not dressed, I saw things with my own eyes just recently. A brother just trying to sell some fruit cups. The sister bends over in the car. She never came back up. Mm, mm. Of some fruit cups. Mm. What's the problem? But when we have our priorities mixed up, because I want to quote the minister, but I'm going to share what he, what he said. And I hope I get this right. He said, your life can change in the twinkling of an eye when you change your perspective of what is valuable. Mm -hmm. What's valuable? You know, what, where's your power? We see value in things. We see value in our, our material possessions. We see value in how much money we make. We take better care of all of that. So we really have to reverse the mindset. And when you go back to Willie Lynch, it was a, you know, you stood on the auction block. How hmm. tight is your behind? How Big are your teeth? Uh, 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 is your breast firm? Is your, you know what I'm saying? Are your, you got big, strong hands? Uh, you got tough feet so you can walk the terrain as a slave with no shoes? It was all about a piece of meat. And he doesn't have to do it anymore. He has made us into himself, so we do it. Mm. So the mindset has to change. You have to start there and find your way back to God. Mm, mm, mm. find your way back to God because you can't say that this is godly you can't say this is godly you want to justify it because the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said the brain was created to think right so you got to justify it so you can have a softer pillow to sleep on at night mm, mm, mm. yes sir excellent go ahead yes ma'am go ahead teach praise be to a lot of people are bearing witness and showing love all around the world um and thank you all for each of your comments. And we come into all of the comments, people showing love. We have a brief 60-second commercial break for yes, all sir. the sponsors of the People's Podcast. We are grateful for every like, share, and subscription. Thank you all to every anonymous cash app out there. And please let us know what city you all are watching from. And if you have any guest suggestions, please put those in the comments. We're coming right back to our sister, Sister Lawida Mohammed. Oh. It's been so long. Yeah.
And we are live with the People's Podcast, Street Premier Media Production. It's a 4K camera and a drone. He does television and film editing. Please reach out if you need any of that. Sister Naima, Stay On Point Dance Academy. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country. Sister Miriam, ABC I Love Me Children's Book and Coloring Book. My Father's Book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ. My two books, Cleopatra, which is a children's book, and No Father, No Excuse, both of which are available on Amazon. Excellent. All right. We have, okay, perfect. Sister Sean says, this story is so relatable. Sister Minister Aisha says, teach on the authority of a man. Um, Sister Katina says, wow, teach sisters. Sister Sean, Muhammad quoting you saying, we want Minister Farrakhan, but we don't want to be Mother uh, Mother Farrakhan, teach sister. I want to see myself through Allah's eyes. Sister Shannon says, Lynchburg, Virginia is watching. Thank you all for letting us know what city you're watching. And Sister April Songbird says, she loves you, my sister. Thank you so much for sharing. Excellent. All right. Speaking of sharing, what made you decide? Because everybody's been talking, I mean, especially, I mean, of course, around the country, but primarily in the city of Atlanta, Georgia, about this sister. They're using references like a fireball. She's magnificent. She's in the ministry class, and she's just tearing up, you know, hurling truth at falsehood. Uh, what what decided what made you decide to join the ministry class? I didn't know they were saying all of that, but all things through to a lot. Well, I got tired of getting a whooping from the God. That's I'm gonna be honest with you. And when I tell you he was whooping my behind, I didn't know if I was going or coming. Lord have mercy. Mm. I, divinely arrested, you know. Um when you when we were on the uh, the podcast last time, you were saying have you have you ever thought about joining the ministry class, you know, and I said, I wouldn't have a problem doing that, right? So all week long, one sister, Sister Lawe, have you ever thought about joining the ministry class? Somebody, Sister Lawe, have you ever thought about joining the ministry class? On the phone, Sister Cap, Sister Lawe, now this is not like a uh, question and an instruction or order. Sister Lawe, have you thought about joining the ministry class? You know, so it was over and over and over again. And, you know, you have those self-defeating engrams sometimes, you you know, you you may be looking at everybody else, you know, but I'm not as studied as them, or I may not be this, may not be that. A lot of want to hear anything. It, at that time, it didn't even matter. I went and got my stuff together. I said, I'm going to ministry class. I said, because my arm's too short to box with the God. I'm just, I'm not going to win. Mm. So I went, and before I could get, sit there and uh, get comfortable, I was put to work. I was trying to find me a big head to hide behind. And Brother Sharif was like, uh, he was asking who wants to go to certain cities. And a sister said she would go. And I said, well, I would help her. Because yeah. before I said I would help her, Brother Sharif said, uh, have y'all sitting here quiet? You know, I'm going to get comfortable. He said, have you, ever, have you ever heard of the draft? I said, oh, he's just going to start pointing people out. So you can go the easy way or you can go the hard way. You know, but I was talking to Brother Sultan a, a long time ago. This is when I was truck driving. And he said, I don't like you on that road, sister. He said, you need to do what you were called to do and your purpose. I said, what do you think that is? He said, teaching. I said, yes, sir. So deep down inside, I knew that that's what I was supposed to do. But I ran from it, you know, and it almost reminds me of a marriage because the minister said this once when somebody was getting married, this was years ago. He said that marriage is like a house on fire with no windows and no doors. So I know when I got into the ministry, it was no turning back. And I had, I would have had to make sure that I fight for this to be true to it, you know, not stand there and be a liar and really work on yourself, you know, and be honest and transparent and open. And when the minister said in the in one of the Twitter books, he said he had too many silent witnesses for a man that has saved your life. So you could be nervous about getting before the people, but you cannot be nervous about bearing witness to the teachers of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Jesus Messiah and I miss. You can't be no punk about that because you wouldn't even be here when I was talking Sunday, I said, none of us were smart enough to say, oh, today is the day I want to give myself to the Lord. Mm -hmm. I want to do 
right and I want to be right and I'm putting all this foolishness behind me. It was circumstances, you know, life and death type circumstances, trials and tribulations and pain that caused Joe behind to run to the God, you know? So, yeah, I got tired of that whooping, Brother Joshua. Ain't no need of me lying. I said, I'm through with that. <laughs> Beautiful. All friends do for a lot. And, th and thank you all for showing love to our sister, Mrs. Lawita, and all around the uh, the world. Thank you all very much. I wanted to ask you about the social media. A lot of people, when they're under trial, they, you know, vomit or throw up. You know, we, we vomit, though. We get in pain. We get hurt. And sometimes we understand what's going on during the trial. Sometimes we don't understand. Yes, what sir. What advice would you give to people about understanding the value of being under trial? Well, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said this. He said, you don't think enough of the God to go to him first. Mm. Social media is not going to give you what you need in venting your business. Now, when you are telling your business, then it should be a testimony. Hmm. If I got a five-day notice and the problem ain't solved, I can't get on here talking about, oh, I got a five-day notice. You, Because you sit on the edge of your seat, you're ready for the victory. So you have to get to the other side of it before you start running your mouth. But the value of it, you know, I never thought I would see the day that I would thank a lot for what I went through. Mm -hmm. I couldn't say because I was suicidal. You know, I had suicidal thoughts. I was like, mm, take me now. I was too much of a punk to do it myself, but I was asking a lot to take me. I said, I can't take this. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't have any more fight left. But the minister said, just when you think you don't, you know, it, you, it's more in you. So for me, personally speaking, my the value for me is the growth and the development and a lot of sufficiency. It removes fear because you're in something that only Allah can get you through. Nobody else can do it. It's like it's like labor. Any woman that had natural childbirth, the mm. harder the pain, the closer the delivery. But you get the whole family in the room with you while you give birth. They can't do nothing for you. Get you mm. some tips, <laughs> rub your head, pat your back, you know. But I'm in pain, and only the God can help me get to the other side of this. It's nice. I appreciate it. But you can't do you. It's nothing you can do for me. Mm -hmm. Only the God. So the value is strengthening that connection. But when you're in it, you really can't appreciate it. I mean, I couldn't. But when I was starting to get to the other side, when I was starting to, you know, it made me even stronger. That's valuable to me. And mm -hmm. then there's no doubt in the God. You know, because we're to try him like he tries us. And then you start to learn the value of that. You know, so for me, yes. His sufficiency. Knowing where to go. That's the value of it. Don't get it confused. Know he is. Think enough of him to go to him first. Nobody else can nobody else can help you. All you can do is somebody call you with a problem is listen. You got your prayer rug? You can share with me. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I try to invite people over. Let's just have a day of prayer. Because <laughs> I can't help you. I can't help myself without the God. I mean, weeping to him today, I said, I can't do anything. I said, God, everything, my thoughts, my mouth, my, my walk, my talk, everything. I can't do anything without you. My decisions, because I done made enough bad ones. I need you for everything. Mm. Yes, sir. Beautiful. All praises to a lot. And people are bear witness. Thank you, everybody who's watching and showing love. This is Lawita uh, Muhammad on the People's Podcast. I wanted to ask you about speaking of the great advice that you have been given throughout this interview. Uh, there's been times where, of course, many of times your whole life you've been around the minister and you know Chicago and girl, you know, all of that great stuff. But has there been anything that the minister has uh some of the words that he shared with you that has helped you? you know, make it through the dark times? Woo, yes. Um, I was the stylist, right? By the Khadija stylist and some of the daughters. And I was, in, I was blessed to have dinner with the minister. And 
I was sitting here and he was at the head of the table, so to my right. And he said, he said, my wife and I appreciate the work that you do and are doing regarding my services to her uh, parents stuff. And we want to help you. And I said, yes, sir. And he said, so go and find a place. So I said, yes, sir. So, you know, when dinner was over, oh, he went, he was getting ready to retire for the evening because Brother Joshua, you know, he was regulating. It was time for him to go to bed. So we still trying to talk. And I'm like, so I, I know Brother Joshua. I'm like, man, look at all me. So he got the minister to go to retire for the evening. And as the minister was going upstairs, he, he, zoomed, he zoomed right into me. He said, remember what I said, go and find a place. And I was saying to myself, you got to ask me twice. I'm going to get my salon, kick in my equipment. Man, so it's me and uh, one of the uh, family assistants or whatever, we're getting a, a list together and we're a uh, list of equipment and location. And I sent it off. I never got a response. I said, well, you know, the only thing impossible for God to do is to lie. The minister's not a liar. So what did all of this mean? It never crossed my mind, anything negative. I just didn't understand correctly, obviously. I said, this is about maybe 15, 16 years later. When I went to the ministry class, that's when it hit me. Mm. Go find a place. What place? What is place? We want to help you. Who is the we? They want to help you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Who is the we? Lord have mercy. So when I was sitting there, I said, mm, this is the place. It kind of always reminded me about when the minister talked about he had one more thing to do, you know, and a lot gives you something. That, I mean, it sits and it sits and it sits and it takes time. For me. And it, it didn't hit me until then, you know. So that was uh, one major uh, thing that I have uh, held on to. And when I shared some of my trials and tribulations with him, and um, he told me, he said, sister, he said, I said, I'm moving to Texas. I, I'm, leave, I'm leaving Arizona because Mother Khadija was like, tell Lewis what's going on. I said, yes, ma'am. So when I shared some of the trials and tribulations and the pain, I wanted to move. And I said, I'm going to Texas. And he was, he says, I could, I'm watching the minister being fed. Anybody out there that's seen it, you can bear witness because he laid back, he got the information, then he set up, and then he gave it to me. Then he leaned back and he said, Oh, sister. He said, Allah says in the whole Quran. He has an enemy in every town for you. So mm -hmm. you can go to Texas, one waiting there for you. <laughs> you can go to Arizona. You can go to Georgia, just one waiting there for you. Because everything that Allah created, he created in pairs. Ain't no running from that. That's what he said in the Ramadan prayer line. He said, you can go all the way in the cave and watch Allah's power meet you there. No hiding place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Please. And thank you all. Everyone is showing the comments. Thank you, Sister Miriam, uh, for that. Uh, for your comment as well. Thank you very much. Everyone who's showing love. I wanted Crazy. to ask you, ma'am. Everybody keeps speaking about how good your food is. The cheesecakes and different types of food. So shout out to the sisters. You know, you all do magic in the kitchen. Right on. <laughs> what what advice would you give to men, such as myself, who with food is just not cooking is just not our thing. Yada, yada, yada. You know what I'm saying? Is, is there a way that you can uh will you ever give us a breakdown on how to cook certain things because that's, you know, that's what you do. You know what I'm saying? What, what about the brothers who, you know, who need to learn how to give us some pointers on how to cook? You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Um, and some and some brothers are not even interested in learning how to cook. I have a client that uh, I take to and from and he's a, he's a brother, um, young enough to be my son, but a young brother. And uh, he wants to pay me to cook for him. You know, he don't. He don't want to learn. So mm. you got bean soup. You know, <laughs> you give some bean soup. You you give somebody some bean soup. It's like the Roach Motel. Once you <laughs> once you check in, they don't check out. You got some more bean soup. They give you back the empty bowl and everything. But 
Yes, sir. I would I would um uh, I wouldn't mind showing or teaching or even providing the food, selling the food. I even thought about a cookbook, you know, I'm too busy for that right now, but it's a thought, you know, to be able to show and, and, and teach if they really, really want to learn how to do it. You know, first mm -hmm. starts with diet. How, how do we get in contact with you for those who want to get some food? I can I can give them my telephone number and call me directly. Wonderful. Yes, ma'am. We're waiting. A six, two, three. Two five eight five two six three six two three two five eight five two six three. Wonderful, praise be to a lot. Yes, ma'am. And I wanted to ask you one of the questions that uh, always fascinates me. Of course, it's the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. People who you know, eyewitness, primary source testimony, yes, were seeing him. But for you to have seen, uh, been, been in the palace and been around the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You know, just can you give us, uh, just let us know what it, what that was like as well. You know, I didn't really appreciate the value of it until I got uh, older. Mm. Because people have fallen in love with the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and never seen him. And to have an opportunity to be around him, recite my lessons, get a couple of dollars, <laughs> and watch him move. And so he was always suited, always. And I shared this before too, because seeing him like going up the stairs, it didn't look like he was using his feet. It was so smooth, you know, but um, just very nice, very pleasant. It was just, and, and peaceful. You mm -hmm. know, the man of God, have an atmosphere. Yes, ma'am. You know, when my daughter got a hug from the minister when we were uh, in Michigan, or no, Arizona, and as soon as he put his arms around her, the tears just rolled down her face. Think about the atmosphere when children are kissing the TV and the minister's on the screen, and they may not have ever met them. You know, so that atmosphere, and that's when you know that you are really striving when you begin to have an atmosphere. We should have an atmosphere as well. You know, not just our part on the left side, you know, not just our suits and our shoes, but his character, you know, is something to definitely strive for. But, and just being around a minister, you know, and hearing him speak, you can hear the most honorable Elijah Muhammad in him, mm -hmm. you know. So you're still with him. You're still around him. But I didn't really understand that until I got older. I said, man, I because you can take things for granted. You know, not, maybe not intentionally, but people are, you know, everybody's not able to say that. You know, everybody's not able to say that. So that's a blessing. Yes, sir. Yes, praise man. God. Oh, praise God. So uh, shout out to um, Sister Lawita and everyone who's watching and sending you love. Can't wait to upload this on YouTube. People want to make sure that they tap in with you. You have a business. Can you let us know your business and how can we support? Um, private luxury transportation. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, it's only one for now, but it's a, a 2020 Cadillac Escalade. Mm, mm. And, um, tags. So the rate is anywhere between 85 to 95 an hour. And um, I was fortunate enough and blessed to take um, some stranded people at the airport out of town since I'm used to driving. Somebody was stuck, need to go to Tennessee, took them to Tennessee. Somebody needed to go to Virginia, you know. So um, it's a, it's a, it allows me to meet really nice people, but it also allows me to fish too. So I have my final calls, my cold water, and my cheesecake. I tell you. Cheesecake. You can drink and eat. We got a ride. So when I, I, I they have, um, when I offer them some of the cheesecake, I wait till they real good and hungry if I'm going for a long drive or whatever. And um, they say, I would love to try the cheesecake. And then you wash it down with some cold spring water <laughs> and you can read a final call. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a way it allows me to fish. And if they are not in the state 
regularly, at least to have that newspaper and a way to connect because it'll say things that you may not be able to say or not comfortable enough saying or whatever. The final call has everything that, you know, a person needs to introduce these teachings, you know, so. Yes, right. ma'am. All praise to Allah. And people are saying, uh, Sister Naima says, beautiful energy. Sister Tamika Haley says, beautiful sister. And people are just showing you love. I wanted to right. ask you, is there a way for the women who were like mentorship, uh, sisterhood, connecting to, um, should they just reach out to you uh, with your phone number? Should they hit you on social media? How should people uh, connect with you? Phone number to connect with me. Now, it's interesting that you asked that question, Brother Joshua, because uh, lately, now what I was known as in Arizona was Mama Queen, right? Okay. Coming here, I had a brother the other day say, uh, Sister, can I just call you TT? You just like, T, you know, you're so nurtured, right? Brother, brother Eric, who is my client, uh, he says, Am I too old to be adopted? You got some adoption papers. He's 30, young enough to be my son, right? So I have sisters in the ranks and outside the ranks. I have a young lady that uh, her son, he's six, and he calls me Auntie Grandma Queen, mm -hmm. all in Auntie Grandma Queen. But the young lady needs a village. So she just wanted, permission well she wanted permission for me to take up under my wing so I, I like to do that because it's just not in the mosque you know that you can teach and train and show women how to keep their home how to cook right. how to take care of themselves it's really our responsibility you know what's the duty of the civilized that's right that's right so every chance I get you know, whether people know it or not, because some things you do, everyone is not aware, right? But what you do in private, Allah will exalt you in public, you know, because it's not to be seen, you know, of men. But call me directly. Cooking, cleaning, bread making, all of it. Loads of bread, peach cobbler, cheesecake, homemade ice cream, your famous fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, praise be to Allah. Yes, ma'am. And people are bear witness saying I mean and showing love to I said to love we did. Well, this has been a great part two. This is an ongoing series, inshallah. Yes, yes so sir. We thank you very much. So like we did, we um you you said earlier that you you've been working in Cobb County. So shout out to Cobb County. Let's make sure we all make sure everybody out uh, there. Cobb County, I was out there helping student minister brother Harold Muhammad. And I opened up for him every Sunday. They got so good to me this Sunday, they had to do one of these notes. <laughs> I said, oh, I ain't carrying the lecture day. Oh, okay, no problem. <laughs> I understand, I understand. Well, this has been great. You are you are, you are, are definitely family, Mrs. Alwita. May Allah continue to bless you, to shine and win, and your your spirit is infectious, and we appreciate your positive energy. This great. is the podcast is home. This is Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off for the People's Podcast. Assalamu alaikum, ma'am. Wa alaikum salam, brother Joshua. Thank you all for watching.